Hello everyone, I'm Alison from Rouse Hill Anglican Church Kids Church and we still can't meet in our normal building for to, to get together in the normal way so we're coming to you again from my home and I'm here with Gus. Hi. And uh, we met Gus last week and last week we, we began our term two oh. unit of work on God's plan for rescue and we've been looking at the Bible, we're going to be looking at the Bible from the beginning to the end not all of it because that would be a, it's a very big book but just looking at God's rescue plan so if you've joined us for the first time this week uh, make sure that you have a look at the other video from last week the 3rd of May um, because that will fill you in on what we began the term with some of you will have little cardboard boxes that Natalie dropped in and uh, if you could continue putting money into those because that's what we would normally do at Kids Church and uh, when we get back together again, we'll collect all that money and we'll send it off to the mission families. And um, we're going to pray now as we open our time together. So girls and boys, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and bow your heads so you don't get distracted. And would you like to close your eyes too? I can't. That's a very good point. Can't close his eyes. Well, Gus, just bow your head and we'll pray. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that although we can't meet together in person, that we have uh, videos that where we can catch up together. Lord God, we pray for our time together this morning. We ask that you would speak to us through your word, the Bible. Father, we pray for the mission families that we support. We pray for them, whatever their situation is. We pray that they would be able to continue telling people the good news about Jesus. Please keep them safe, we pray. And we pray for our church here too at Rouse Hill, Lord. We ask that you would keep everybody safe and everybody well. And we pray for an end for an end to the coronavirus too, Lord, so that we can get together again very soon. And we pray for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Gus, yeah? have you been washing your hands? Yeah. Have you been washing yours? Yes, I've been washing my hands. Why? Have you seen where your hand is? Uh, yep. Yes, I agree. I will be going to wash my hands, definitely. Good. So what else have you been doing? I've been creating. Creating? Yeah. That's really good, boys and girls, because last week we were talking about creating, weren't we? Yeah. And Gus had been saying that he hadn't been doing any creating at all. Yeah. But now he has. Yeah. So what have you been creating? I've been writing poems. Poems? Yeah. Poems? I've never picked you as a poet. Yeah. All right, well, would you like to tell us one of these poems? Yeah. Okay, we're all ears. Let's hear it. Okay. Baked beans are good for your heart. Baked beans make you feel funny. <laughs> That's not... Very nice. I like it. That's, and besides, you did not create that. Yeah, I did. No, you did not create that. No? No, no you didn't create it. That is not your own creation. That is old. Yeah? Yeah, that's old. We used to say that at primary school. Oh, yeah. That is old then. Yes, it is. Mm, yes, well, anyway, moving right along. Do you remember last week, Gus, how I had been showing you my creation? No, this again. Yes, this again. Look, I don't know why you don't like my creation. Look, boys and girls, look at my beautiful creation. It's lovely. I'm so proud of it. It's yuck. It's, oops, it's fallen over. Stand up, creation. Yeah, that's better. Look how beautiful it is. It's yuck. I don't know how you can say it's yuck. Look, it's it's just gorgeous. It's perfect. I am so really happy with it. I just think it's perfect. So don't touch it though, will you? Because it's really something special to me and um, I am I really love it. So don't touch it. Okay. So um, I would like to give my creation a name. Yeah? Yeah, I'd really like to give it a name. So I was just thinking maybe something like... Oh, I don't know. Coochie-coo? Yuck. Hmm. 
Okay, well, maybe what about cuddles? Cuddles is a lovely name. No. You don't like cuddles? No. What's wrong with it? I hate it. What's I don't know, but what would you suggest? Can you think of another name? Yeah. What would you call it? I'd call it splat. Splat! Why on earth would I call my beautiful creation splat? <gasps> Look what you did! I can't believe you did that! Why did you do that? I made something beautiful, perfect, totally gorgeous, and I told you not to touch it. Oops. I told you not to touch. I'm so upset, Gus. Look at my beautiful creation. It's ruined. I can think of another name now. You can think of another name now. Well, it's a bit late now, isn't it? So what is this other name? It starts with C. C? Yeah, C, yeah. <laughs> oh, Gus, I'm sorry, but you have really, really upset me now. I had this beautiful creation, and never mind see ya. I think we better say see ya to you. I'm going to put you in the other room where you can't get into any more mischief. Come on, let's go. See ya, see ya. <sighs> My goodness. My beautiful creation. I told him not to touch it, and he had to touch it. I specifically said, don't touch my perfect creation, and he splattered it. And look, it's a flat splat. I'm so disappointed. I have to make a new one now. Hi, kids. Well, before we start the story, let me read to you from Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 to 6. So if you have your CEV Bible there, you can look that up too. It's just the third chapter of the Bible and it's Genesis chapter 3 and we're just going to be reading verses 1 to 6. So here goes. The snake was sneakier than any of the other wild animals that the Lord God had made. One day it came to the woman and asked, did God tell you not to eat fruit from any tree in the garden? The woman answered, God said we could eat fruit from any tree in the garden except the one in the middle. He told us not to eat from that fruit or even to touch it. If we do, we will die. No, you won't, the snake replied. God understands what will happen on the day you eat fruit from that tree. You will see what you have done and you will know the difference between right and wrong, just as God does. The woman stared at the fruit it looked beautiful and tasty. She wanted the wisdom that it would give her, and she ate some of the fruit. Her husband was there with her, so she gave some to him, and he ate it too. Okay, that's the end of our reading, so let's find out what happens in our story. Bye. Hello, everybody. Look who's back. It's Sketch. Hi, Sketch. Remember, Sketch never talks. Sketch only draws. What's Sketch going to draw for us today? Well, last week we learned how God created everything in the heavens and on the earth, and it was good. Of everything God made, he made people last. The Bible says God took dirt from the ground and formed a body from the dirt. Then God breathed his breath into the body, and that body became a living person. God named that person Adam. He put Adam in a special garden called the Garden of Eden and he gave Adam important work to do. Adam took care of the garden and named all the animals. That must have been fun, but God knew it wasn't good for Adam to be alone. So God made another person. When Adam saw her, he said, at last, she is someone like me. I'll call her woman. Adam and Eve must have loved living in a garden. They talked with God every evening and there was lots to eat. In fact, Adam and Eve could eat from anywhere in the garden, from any plant or tree, except one. God told Adam, do not eat 
from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you, you'll die if you do. God loved Adam and Eve and wanted them to live to be happy. So he made this one rule for them to obey. Adam and Eve obeyed this rule until the day a beautiful snake came along. The snake was really God's enemy, Satan, in disguise. Satan wanted to destroy God's plan and the people God loved so much. The snake slyly asked Eve if God really had said they couldn't eat from that one tree. The snake told Eve that it would be good to try that fruit. He said eating that fruit wouldn't make them die. It would make them like God. Eve saw the beautiful fruit. It looked delicious. She reached, she picked the fruit off the tree and took a bite. At that moment, everything changed. A person had disobeyed God's one rule. That's called sin. Eve gave the fruit to Adam and he ate some too. Now they both had sinned and disobeyed God. When they heard God com coming, Adam and Eve hid from God, who loved them and had made them to share his wonderful creation. God called to them. Finally, Adam answered and God told God that he was afraid. God asked if Adam had broken his one rule. Adam blamed Eve. He said it was Eve's fault. Then Eve blamed the snake. God was very sad. Adam and Eve were certainly sad. Adam and Eve had to leave the beautiful garden. Now thorns and weeds would grow. There would be pain and death. We should have done what God told us to do, they said. But now it's too late. Adam and Eve disobeyed God and now everything was ruined. They didn't live in the perfect garden anymore. And instead of being happy, they were sad. Instead of living forever with God as their friend, one day they would die. Disobeying God was a terrible mistake. What a sad ending to the story today. And there was a sad ending as well to my conversation with Gus. And if you remember, I asked Gus not to touch my creation and he had to touch it. He splattered it and ruined it and had to be sent out of the room into another room before he did any more damage. So girls and boys, that's a very similar story to what we heard about what happened in the Garden of Eden. It'll be really interesting next week to find out what happens. So we'll look forward to that next week. Uh, good morning, kids. Uh, I'm missing you a lot. And I'm going to lead us in uh, prayer now as we think about um, what happened in our story. And so there are so many ways that we can let God down. I can think of lots of ways that I let God down by wanting to do things my way instead of his way. And I need to say sorry for those. Maybe you can think of some right now that you would like to say sorry to God for. Don't say it out loud because it is just between you and God. When we get to the point in the prayer, tell God silently about this thing that you are sorry for. Now, let's talk to God right now about these things. So close your eyes and put your hands together like we do at Kids Church to stop us from being distracted from uh, what's going on around us. And let's uh, say this prayer. Heavenly Father, we are sorry that we let you down over and over again. As followers of Jesus, we want to live in a way that pleases you. So Lord, today I want to say sorry for and you can quietly say the things that you're sorry for i 
I am sorry. Lord, I sometimes find it hard to live in a way that pleases you. So I ask now that the Holy Spirit would help me. Help me to be honest with you about the struggles I have at times to do the right thing. Thank you for your promise that when we are truly sorry, you forgive us. So thank you for forgiving me now. Thank you that I don't have to feel bad about this now. Please be with me as I live as a friend of Jesus. Amen. Well, I'm going to hand over to Alison now because she's going to introduce our craft for us. Bye. And now we're going to begin doing our craft. Natalie should have dropped off your resource pack for you through the week and you have one week to catch up on. If you remember, we were waiting for some of the, the scrapbooks to arrive and they finally arrived. So now you can get on and do those. And I'm going to show you how to put together the first two weeks of your craft. So you are going to be doing it in a scrapbook. Natalie and I are making a banner each for us to put in the classrooms when we get back to church, but yours will be in a scrapbook. So you can use one page of your scrapbook for the picture. And then if you are in a person who likes to do writing as well, you can leave a blank page on the other side and write what happened in that part of the story to help you remember what the pictures are about. It's up to you, or you can just do it on each page, but you will arrange it the same as I'm doing. So for week one from last week, you will, in your resource pack, have some pages that look like this. Not that, not that one, but you will have these ones. So you're going to cut out the shapes that you have been given. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to arrange, you have this, this title page on the front of your scrapbook and I've got it at the beginning of my banner. So the first thing that we're going to do once you have them all cut out is to make the tree. So we're going to put the tree here like this and then we're going to pop that there like that. And then we're going to assemble our people on this little piece of ground here. So the people are both the same shape. And we just put them side by side like this. And we're going to glue on their mouths. And we're going to put hair on Adam and hair on Eve. Then we're going to give them a face. And the next thing that we're going to do is to glue on our crown to show that God was king of his creation. So that's our that's our illustration for week one. So you're going to glue all that on. I'm not going to glue it on today because I'm trying to be in a hurry. Okay, so that's last week's story. Everything was fine in the garden. This week we have a crown again. And we have a snake. We're going to glue these on and we have a pear. Now, this, lots of people believe that the fruit that Eve ate was an apple. Bible doesn't actually say what kind of fruit it was. So we've chosen a pear and you're just going to draw in a little top to the pear like that. And then you're going to give the snake an eye and... If you like, you can give it a tongue because this was a talking snake. Now we've got our crown here again to show that God was still king of his creation. But because of Adam and Eve sinning, they decided that God was no longer their king and that they wanted to do things their way. 
So there's week one, there's week two. Mine aren't glued, but of course yours will be beautifully glued. And yours is also a little bit smaller than mine, but so that it fits on your scrapbook page. So girls and boys, hope you have fun cutting those out and making them as part of your family scrapbook album. See you next week.